Hi guys, it's Annie. Welcome back to Bloom TV. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video from the one that I usually film and I'm going to be discussing trigger warnings in books and the consequences of those, whether we as people have responsibility to mark about trigger warnings in books. And I just have two things to start off before I really get into discussing this topic and my feelings about it. And the first one is I will be discussing a lot of like many serious trigger warnings and issues um, such as suicide and self-harm in this video um, purely because it relates to the topic I'm talking about so if that sort of thing is makes you uncomfortable or you're not comfortable watching a video about this then I just wanted to warn you um, so you can click off now um, before I go on to discussing those things and secondly this is a video with my opinion and I love if this started a discussion but if you want to be like join in the conversation please do it respectfully without you know cussing me for having an opinion that might be different to yours and yeah that I just wanted to say that so please just be respectful in the comments of any other people's opinions and try to be polite as well and respectful of other people and their issues and their opinions so let's after that let's just get on to the video so I just wanted to discuss trigger warnings in books and also media as a whole and a couple of months ago I was having a conversation with my friend or well, someone I know on Tumblr called Megan at the Bibliophile Journal, I'll link her blog in the description and we were having a conversation about trigger warnings in books and kind of do publishers have that, um, do they have like a kind of responsibility to mark on the back of a book or somewhere on a book visibly if something is going to trigger someone um, and we were just kind of having a conversation about it from experiences that we'd both had um, with trigger warnings in books um, because and like how that can spark kind of perhaps um, anxiety attacks or a panic attack or just bad anxiety just from reading about something that can trigger you um, and so we were just having this conversation and I just thought oh it would be really good to make a video about this and kind of discussing it um, so if you don't know what a trigger warning is it's something that is I first discovered from using Tumblr um, if something is has perhaps like a some certain topic um, in the in the post or in a photograph or in any kind of post on Tumblr, um, some people decide to mark these posts with TW standing for trigger warning or CW content warning, um, say suicide or anxiety or food because you don't know what someone might be going through and then someone who might suffer from something like anxiety or depression, suicidal thoughts, um, eating disorders, they might then want to backlist that tag so that they don't have to see these upsetting things which might trigger an attack or a relapse or something along those lines. And I'm not a mental health expert, I just want to say that now. This is just all from personal experience um, and conversations I've had with people about these things. So in no way take this as any sort of thing, it's all opinion in this video, none of it is fact and it's all kind of gained um, from what I've taken from research etc. Um, so someone might backlist something and so they just don't have to see things or like blood if you have of like have a phobia of blood or it makes you uncomfortable because blood certainly makes me uncomfortable I also have a friend who also uses Tumblr who has that kind of problem um so it's just kind of a way not everyone does it and it is in no way required to do it but some people do and some people don't and that's fine um, I personally try to um, and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal here I'm just saying because I know from experience that it makes that I like to backlist things um, that I try to do it for other people but it's not I'm not here to preach it and say that everyone should do it that's not the message of this video um, and it's like the kind of I was going to use the example of on Tumblr there's also the tag NSFW which means not suitable for work. I only found that out about a year ago from being on Tumblr for a couple of years. I didn't know what it stands for. And it's just like anything that's not really suitable for work if you're checking Tumblr at work, so like nudity or anything that's going to make you uncomfortable in a public environment so then people can backlist that tag. Um, so it's kind of similar to that in a way and there's also, you've probably seen the NSFW tag on Booktube that goes around... So it's kind of a known an acronym and I would say so is the trigger warning and content warning. 
one, especially on the internet, and I feel like there's a really good understanding of those issues on the internet, which is why it's such a great place when, like, social media can be such a great outlet to discuss these topics. Um, and then I just wanted to discuss about it on booktube. So I quite a few times I see booktubers, if they're recommending a book or they're talking about a book, they'll then say if it's got a certain trigger warning in it. So especially someone I just know that does that is Lindsay at Lindsay Ray. Um, if a book deals with a topic which she considers might have a trigger warning in it, then she'll say so in her video, which I feel is very supportive and helpful. And again, I'm not criticising anyone for not doing that. I'm just using her as an example off the top of my head. Um, and it's something I try to do, but as booktubers, do we have responsibility to do those things? Do we have responsibility to say, does this have a trigger warning? And this is just all me asking the questions. What do you think? Um, I would personally consider that we do, but then it can be difficult to know. Everyone has individual issues and individual problems, and we don't always know about them. And they are individual to each person. And you know, is that our and is it our responsibility to educate ourselves, or do we want people to come forward about these things? Because talking about issues uh, personal to us can be difficult, and I think, yeah, they can be so difficult to talk about. I know from experience. So. Where does that lie? I'd love to know what you guys thought about that. Um, and then I wanted to talk about actual physical books. So do books have kind of, if do they have that trigger warning notice on them and should they? Do publishers have that responsibility? Kind of linking back to what I said earlier. I just had some examples here. Um, one I picked out is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. This is very obvious when you read the back that it's about suicide. It mentions it's about suicide. Um, it mentions that and it, you, you really know, you're warned going into this book that it is about that issue. So if you're triggered by it, you know to avoid it. That's in my mind a good example of branding a book obviously it very much centers on this issue so you'd kind of be silly not to know about it from like not to put it on the blurb but still and then another book that I think deals with um an issue of sexual assault and rape quite well really well actually is Easy by Tamara Weber and again this kind of goes into the issue on the back it says um and I'm not spoiling that by saying that this is about rape or sexual assault you know from the very first few pages um even if it's not directly on the blurb so please don't think I'm spoiling you because I'm trying not to um and it says on the back um Lucas is a stranger who saved Jacqueline from an attack by a fellow student now we don't know the nature of that attack but we at least know that there's something there and again with most people when they've mentioned this book I've known that they've talked about that and talked about it as a trigger warning However, there are other books that don't go into that and that people can be surprised by and triggered by because there's nothing about it on the back, even if it happens in the very first few pages. So I'm just going to talk about something, a trigger warning that I feel is prominent in, not prominent, but in this novel. And if you really don't want to know about it, then, um, and because it isn't really a spoiler, it does happen in the first chapter, but even so, I'll hold up my hand and I'll put it down when I finish talking about this book. Um, so this deals with self-harm, um, but not in an obvious way. It is not at all a mention of self-harm on the back of this book. And it happens in the first chapter, I'd say, um, and that's the only time it happens, but that's just something that I feel people should be made aware of. The only thing that says on the back is for older readers. And I don't feel like there's any kind of like knowledge on there about it or anything so that is just something that I was surprised by when I read this book and also kind of triggered by um so I've now finished ooh, talking about that one the books nearly just all fell off and the last book that I'm just gonna talk about as an example is Just Listen by Sarah Dessen again if you don't want to know about this um and aren't bothered with the particular trigger warnings um then I'm holding my hand up and I'll put it down when I finish talking and possibly spoiling um, what's in this book. But this book deals with anorexia um, and eating disorders and bulimia um, and self-harm to an extent from what I can remember. And there is no warning of this on the back. Also, there's an, a sexual assault encounter in this book. Um, that is a possible spoiler, I'm sorry. Um, but I there's no mention of it on the back at all. Um, and I feel... 
it, it says teen, so you know it's for teenagers, but why would that change anything? Um, it just, the only, there's a mention of a family slowly falling apart, um, full of secrets, so you know there's a secret, and then there's the night everything changed is another phrase used. Ooh, um, so I think that this really doesn't describe... It does describe what's in the book, but it doesn't describe the trigger warnings that are in this book, and I feel like it definitely could have been better branded. So, and I've finished talking about that, what do, you, what do you think? Do you think that publishers need to have that kind of responsibility to protect their readers? Because it is, in a way, protection, I think, and I think it's really important, and part of a general problem of understanding mental health and really making and understanding mental health is dealing with it further in the media. And... It is something that I, I just wanted to talk about specifically books today because this is a booktube channel but I also just wanted to talk about media in general. So in films you always have a warning. So you have the age rating where you do in the UK. So you have like 12, 15, 12A and an 18. And then once you get to that film um, or if you've done some research you can research like the trigger warnings that might be in that film because they'll say it contains say sexual assault or violence or blood. Um, I know definitely on the Gone Girl DVD because that's one I looked at recently it said um, it was an 18 and it contained bloody violence and harsh swearing or something along those lines. So that is a kind of warning to people and um, especially for me I really don't like blood. It's not at all a phobia but it's something I rather avoid is gruesome pictures and gore it's just not great for me um makes me feel really uncomfortable so I knew then um but luckily I'd read the book so I was kind of knowledgeable of when those bloody events were going to happen um again if something say swear really harsh swearing or violent swearing made you uncomfortable then that you'd know that would be something to avoid in that film and in general the media I feel that in tv that's generally quite good as well so for tv programs in britain most channels say if there's going to be a scene of upsetting like uh, upsetting scenes um strong violence or strong language um i feel those are the main three things that are kind of spoken on so if say you're watching a tv program and it's just about to start um there'll be just like a little announcement saying something like that or that the reports can especially on the news if reports contain flashing imagery so if you have epilepsy then you're warned of those things um but the other day I was watching um call the midwife which is a program it's a really great program on bbc one in britain and it's just slowly it's in its fourth season now, and I really enjoy it I think it's a great program um and I don't know if I just missed it because usually BBC is quite good with these things but they didn't say that there would be an upsetting scene or um any there was no kind of warning that I saw um and I was watching it in like the minutes before but this Again, possible spoilers for Call the Midwife, but I'm not really going to go into detail, but there was basically a scene where someone attempted to commit suicide, and it really triggered me for reasons, and I could not watch it. I knew it was about to happen. I'd guessed, um, I was, like, saying to my mum that I was, when we were watching it, I was like, oh no, I know what he's going to do, he's going to try to kill himself, um, I was like, I don't think I can watch this, um, and I got really upset by it, um, for reasons, and that wasn't talked about before the program and do we have a responsibility do broadcasters have a responsibility um to discuss those things and warn people of those things because anxiety attacks and panic attacks are horrible things for people to suffer with just because someone didn't think about it potentially triggering someone else and I just think is it something that we need to discuss more openly and more importantly I'm getting back to the central issue do publishers need to contain trigger warnings and do we as booktubers need to have those things I'd be really interested in what you guys think on this obviously all of this is my own opinion but I'd be really interested to hear what you guys thought about this issue and like what your feelings are again please just be respectful in the comments this is all my own opinion and please feel free to correct me as well but if you are going to just please be polite again be respectful of other people's opinions and i'll see you all again for another video bye